The death of Robin Williams has so many people around the country, indeed around the globe, talking, and it's bringing fresh awareness to depression and mental health in general. We have two medical experts live in our studio. They're here answering your questions at WPTV.com. Elaine Rotenberg is the clinical director at Alpert Jewish Family and Children's Service in West Palm Beach, and Josephine Healy is a primary therapist and the assistant clinical director at the Lighthouse Recovery Institute. We thank you both for being with us. Josephine, we'll begin with you, if I may. People watching this broadcast are going to be some who may feel depressed, mm -hmm. and they may feel that themselves, or they may look on at a loved one and say, how do I know if this is something that I should seek help for? What are the markers and the warning signs? I'm getting that a lot today. Let's begin with you. I think some of you know, the most important things to do is to look at the basic symptoms and signs of depression, which could be loss of appetite, changes in sleep pattern, changes in appetite pattern, withdrawal from social activities, you know, and a decreasing interest in things that used to be important. And if we can educate ourselves on, on the symptoms and signs, then we can really look out for those that we care about most. In yourself or in others. And sometimes it's toughest, as all, at, at, in the most part, to aim that mirror at yourself. Elaine Rotenberg? Well, one of the challenges we have is the stigma attached to mental mm -hmm. illness. And really, if we're going to use this tragedy to kind of move the, the needle a little sure. bit, what we really need to do is begin talking about the fact that mental illness is an illness. Mm -hmm. That one out of four people, some say one out of five, but even that's high, struggle with a mental illness in our country. Very briefly, and we know you're going to answer a lot of questions on the web, very briefly from both of you. Robin Williams, he had the money, the resources, and I've had people say, gosh, if, if he couldn't get the kind of help that could help him from this, who can? How do you get the right help and make sure it's effective? I think that there's levels of help at all different socioeconomic levels. You know, I think it's really about just having people who care and being educated on the signs and symptoms and seeking help or asking a loved one if they need help, depending upon what resources are available for you. Do you agree? Because he could have had any help he wanted. I think in the case of a case like this, we're not talking about somebody not being able to afford services. We're talking about somebody who is, again, shut in within himself, mm -hmm. perhaps ashamed, not being able to share sure. about it, and suffering alone. And those are the kind of things you have to look for in yourself and others mm -hmm. and make sure you deal with it. We're going to talk about it on the website much more on air. We thank you for helping us begin this conversation. We'll have much more from both of you through the hour and a half. Shannon? Michael, thanks.